Chapter 9 The Great Osandra. I must be getting weak minded, sighed Louise, more than an hour later, as they pulled up at their destination. Otherwise, I'm sure I'd have no part in this crazy scheme of yours. The Seidel car had been parked on Clark Street, and the two girls sat peering up at the dingy looking two story frame building which the corner filling station man had assured them housed the seance establishment of the great Melvin O. Sandra. Miss Weems called this a magnificent place, said Penny. She must have had delusions of grandeur. Either that or a Sandra had hypnotized her. Let's not go inside. I don't like the appearance of the building. What? demanded Penny. Not go inside after wasting an hour trying to find the place? It's probably better looking inside. She caught Louise by the hand and pulled her from the car. I don't like the idea of pretending we're reporters, Penny. I won't know how to conduct myself. Oh, that's easy, laughed Penny. Reporters just act breezy and superior and ask lots of personal questions no one cares to answer. Leave all the talking to me. I shall. At the entrance to the building, the girls came upon a sign which read, Melvin Osandra, room 208, the public invited. Louise halted abruptly. I'll not go another step unless you promise to be careful what you say to Osandra about the Schlosser family. There's no telling how he might react. I'll be cautious. They went up the creaking stairway, opened the door to room 208, and found themselves in a small reception hall provided with a few straight back chairs. While the girls were looking around, a tiny window in the wall swung back on its hinges. A thin-faced, dark-eyed man with large bulging forehead peered out at them. If you're here for communion with spirits, he said in a deep voice, the next seance will be held at four o'clock. Oh, we came to see Mr. Osandra, replied Penny. Is he here now? The piercing black eyes probed her face until she felt decidedly uncomfortable. Your name, he demanded. Penelope B. Parker, said Penny. With dignity, I represent the R Riverview Star. Oh, you're a reporter, the man replied warily. What is it you want? I should like to interview Mr. Osandra. May we see him, please? You're talking with him now. I'm the great Melvin O'Sandra. Uh, I'm very glad to meet you, Penny stammered, caught off guard. I should like to ask you a few questions. Proceed. Where were you born, Mr. O'Sandra? In a hospital, replied the man without a flicker of a smile. When did you first feel the... Penelope groped for words. The call to become a medium. I do not designate myself by such a cheap name, Melvin O'Sandra said coldly. Tell me why you were sent here. Why, it was a little idea of my own. I thought our paper might be interested in an interview. You are such a well-known man, Mr. O'Sandra. The medium did not respond to Penny's flattery. I have had experience with reporters before, he said. They try to write stories which make me appear ridiculous in the eyes of the public. That hurts my business. And then the police start investigating. I'll thank you to keep my name out of the Riverview Star. Melvin O'Sandra slammed shut the little window and the two girls were left alone in the waiting room. They hastily retreated down the stairway to the street. Your idea was a marvelous one, I must say, teased Louise. We certainly learned a lot. Oh, well, Penny shrugged. Dad says a good reporter has to learn to be bounced when he's thrown out. This was good experience. Thank you. I have no ambition to become a reporter. Just to make the day complete, suppose we visit Nellie, Penny laughed. Why should we go there? I'd like to learn if she sold her shop. You're certainly in a questioning, asking mood today, Louise sighed, but she agreed to drive her chum to the doll shop. The girls parked across the street from the building. Curtains had been half drawn down over the windows, but the front door stood slightly ajar. Without intending to be particularly quiet, 
Louise and Penny entered the shop and gave no warning of their arrival. The main room of the doll shop was deserted. Dust lay thickly on the counters. Thinking that Nellie probably was in the rear room, Penny stepped quickly to the doorway. The owner of the doll shop was sitting by the kitchen range, busy with her sewing. She had not heard the girls enter. Hello, Nellie, said Penny. You'll strain your eyes working so hard. With a cry of alarm, the girl sprang from her chair. Nervously, she thrust the dark colored cloth which she had been sewing behind her back. Oh, you startled me, she exclaimed. We didn't mean to, replied Penny. B busy? I, I was doing a little sewing, Nellie stammered. Did you wish something? With a deft movement, she whipped the dark cloth into her sewing basket. It was clear to Penny and Louise that they had intruded upon Nellie at an awkward moment. The girl had not seemed in the least pleased to see them. Oh, we just dropped around to ask if you had sold your business, Penny said carelessly. But I see you're still here. I am here, yes, Nellie answered. However, I turned the shop over to Miss Mrs. Farmer this morning. Then you're working for her, Louise asked. I don't know how long I'll remain. Only a few days, I hope. You don't care for your employer? Penny inquired shrewdly. She observed that the girl had been crying. Mrs. Farmer is very particular. She hasn't paid me for my shop yet. I hope she doesn't mean to cheat you, said Penny. Nellie made no reply. She moved to the window and stood gazing down the street. Mrs. Farmer will be coming back any minute, she said nervously. I, I think you ought to go before she gets here. Louise stared in disbelief, wondering if she had heard correctly. Before she could speak, Penny took her by the elbow and steered her towards the door. When the two girls were on the street, a safe distance from the doll shop, Louise gave vent to her feelings. I'll never go back there again as long as I live. Why, Nellie practically ordered us out. I, th I think she was afraid. Afraid? Yes, she didn't wish Mrs. Farmer to find us at the shop. Lou, did you notice that the doll she was making when we came in? Was it a doll? I didn't see what she was. She whisked it out of sight so fast. I saw it quite plainly, said Penny. I don't wonder she didn't care for us to see it. Just what was it anyhow, Louise inquired. Can't you guess, asked Penny. A witch doll. For all the world, like the one she sent Miss Harmon. Do, 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 do.